you don't know me, uh, my name is Mark Van Buren, and I'm a meditation instructor, a yoga instructor as well. But my main thing is really teaching meditation and mindfulness. And that was going to be the original um, workshop, an introduction to meditation and mindfulness. And it's still going to be. Uh, but we're also kind of throwing in finding peace with difficult times. Just because of the nature of the situation we're dealing with. And, you know, life presents us with plenty of difficult times. So if we, if we don't have um, any practice to help us with that, um, then, you know, <laughs> we're going to have a really hard time with difficult times. So, you know, this is a strange time. You know, some of us are home maybe more than we usually are, and maybe we're bored or restless and we're dealing with that. Others, you know, with some financial responsibilities, maybe it's, you know, how am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to feed my kids? Especially if you can't go to work. So a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, um, a lot of worry. And then still there's others that, you know, have chronic conditions or might be a little bit older, or maybe some of you out there have older grandparents or, or parents. And, you know, the, the concern about this virus, uh, you know, killing somebody, it it's, uh, can be scary. So what do we do with all of this? You know, th this is all stuff that we can use for our practice. Um, and... You know, I'm hoping that I can give you a way to really face all these things in a radically different way. So let me kind of start with meditation and mindfulness. Uh, meditation is normally understood uh, in a couple different ways. You know, on one level, it's presented in like the kind of hippie <laughs> new age way, like everything's love and and, and unicorns and rainbows and you know that's not that's not real life you know there's nothing wrong with positive thinking um, but you know something like cancer or the situation we're in now or or difficult times I mean they're not all rainbows and unicorns and, and that's okay and then it's okay to go through difficult times and, and I mean it's a part of life it's it's a part of our real life and you know we can pretend like it's not uh, but it is so that's like one way that it's presented as like just this all love and <laughs> stuff. Um, another way it's presented as like getting everything you desire. You know, like, oh, let's meditate so that I can manifest every desire that I have. Now, I come from a Buddhist tradition that says that, you know, grasping on to self-centered desires is actually the biggest form of our suffering. So for me to teach somebody, hey, meditate to manifest everything you desire, one is unrealistic. You can't get everything you want. That's not how life works. And two, you know, maybe if we let go of desire, we might find ourselves a little more content, a little more happy. So something to uh, think about. So that's another way that it's presented. A third way it's presented, and, you know, especially now, is as stress reduction, purely stress reduction. Let's meditate to reduce our stress, to feel good, to just kind of step out of our lives for a second. And again, nothing wrong with doing it that way, but for me, I want it to be practical. You know, I really want it to make sense in my life. It's great if you go take 10 minutes of your day to de-stress and feel good, but if it doesn't, you know, bridge the gap into your daily life, uh, and you just go right back to anxiety and depression and, and a slave to your thoughts and your, your feelings and, and your moods, then what good is the practice? You could do 20 years of feeling good for 10 minutes every day, and then when something falls apart in your life or you deal with something like this, where you know the rug's pulled out, you have no tools, right? So the practice doesn't make any sense then. So I present meditation in a radically different way based on the, you know, the way that I've practiced over the past 12 years, and that's as a life practice. So meditation has to be a life practice. It's not like a, a multivitamin. You know, you take it in the morning and you forget about it. You know, this practice is 24-7. You know, are you awake? Are you aware? Do you know what's going on in this moment? Do you know what's going on in your mind, in your body? What mood is present? Are you stuck in that mood? Are you free from that mood? I mean, it includes everything. And that's what I love about it, is that my practice includes everything. Whether I'm hanging out with my kids and loving my life in that moment, whether I'm at the bedside of somebody in hospice, whether I'm stuck in traffic at work, whether I'm bored at home because of the coronavirus, 
it's all included and it's all the ingredients of our lives and it's all the ingredients of our practice you know and it's um the common analogy is of the lotus flower um the lotus flower blossoms right there in the middle of the mucky dirty pond it's not that you have to clean up everything first and filter all the mud out you know it's it's right here in the mess of our lives that we can grow spiritually that we can cultivate wisdom you know, live more wisely, live more compassionately, uh, and, and live more kindly. Um, so meditation is a, a full life practice. And another reason why I don't like when it's just like, let me just feel good for 10 minutes, when meditation becomes just another way to feel good, you miss the whole point, right? Because you can't have equanimity if you only like the good stuff. Right? We can't feel complete within ourselves if we only hold on to this little patch of good stuff. We have to embody everything. We have to be spacious enough to hold everything. The 10,000 joys and sorrows of our lives. Right? And the good news is that there's a part of ourselves that's already spacious enough to hold everything. Right? And the analogy I use is, imagine your whole life, you know, you've thought that you were the, the colors and lights on a movie screen. So when there was a sad scene, you were sad. When there was happy, you were happy. When there was a painful scene, you were in pain. But then someone comes along and reminds you that you're the movie screen itself, right? You are that which allows experience to arise in the first place, right? And just like a movie screen is not affected by the different scenes played on it, there's a part of ourselves that we can take refuge in, especially during these difficult times, that is not affected by the moods, by the thoughts, by the feelings, by the sensations, by, by everything going on. And it's not a way to escape or push it away. It's just finding peace right within it. You know, and T.S. Eliot said it beautifully. He said, the still point of the turning world and our meditation practice is going to connect us, reconnect us with that still point. So let me get to my definition uh, of meditation. So for me, I have like an A and a B. You know, in the dictionary, you have like A, B, C. You have all these different <laughs> versions. Uh, so I have two versions that I that like. So for, as far as meditation, on one level, we're just practicing being present, right? Practicing being in this very moment. And why, right? Why do we want to be here in this moment? Well, you know, what's so special about this moment? Well, here are three words for you that I think you can contemplate for the rest of your life and go deeply into and, and get a lot of insight from. This is it, right? This is it. Look around, wherever you are. Feel your body in this moment. Hear the sounds. Notice the thoughts. Notice whatever's present. This is your life. There is no other place. Right? And sometimes people are like, oh, great. <laughs> right? And I get that. Sometimes life isn't that pleasant. Um, but it's really empowering when you truly get this here. It's one thing to understand it here. Yeah, I get it. I can't be anywhere else. But when you truly understand that this is your life, that this is it, you know, whether you like it or not, this is your life presently. And there's two, two options, right? We can accept it and work with it. Or we can keep fighting it, complaining about it, and, and you know, causing unnecessary suffering in the meantime. Things are hard enough. We don't have to resist it and fight it and make it worse, right? So there's a, there's a peaceful way to uh, approach these things. So on one level, we're practicing being present. And how often are you present? Think about that. Let's say if you went for a walk outside, you know, how often are you actually feeling the steps, smelling the air, hearing the birds, you know, feeling the wind on your face or the warmth of the sun, right? Most of the time it's like, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. And, you know, and now, you know, now that we don't have our job, maybe we're a little more present, but it's like, I got to get this done for work and I got to go food shopping and this and that. Um, we miss our lives because we're so busy thinking about our lives. And I don't know about you, but that bothers me. I don't want to miss my life as it happens. I don't want to be so busy thinking about life and caught in the storylines about my life and the dramas that I create in my mind. Meanwhile, a beautiful day, right? A beautiful day. Or just whatever is happening in this moment. So we want to practice being present because a lot of unnecessary suffering comes from thinking about life. 
right? Our memories, what's happened, how, how many people out there are just trying to rehash the past. If only I did this, if only I made this choice, if only, if only, if only, right? What's done is finished, right? We got to grow up. What's happened is done. And I'm not saying that, if, you know, especially if you had trauma in your life, that you still don't have to process things because you do. You have to deal with the things that have happened, but it's finished. It's done. There's nothing you can do about it, right? And the future, same thing, right? I know there's a monk and he says, I can tell the future and I always get it right. And he says, it's uncertain, right? And that's true for all of us. And don't let this coronavirus situation, you know, fool you, right? Because we think, oh, this coronavirus threw us into uncertainty. No, we've always been right in the middle of uncertainty. Every day of our lives is uncertain. So it's not that one thing or another causes it. It might remind us, like it's definitely reminding us, hey, we're not in control here. There's a, you know, <laughs> a lot going on here. Um, so practicing being present. And, and even in the present moment, um, we're not really here, right? It, it's too cold. It's too hot. I'm too bored. I, I need this. I need that. We're not ever here because we're so busy commenting and narrating the present moment that we never really touch into the rawness of it, to the, to the, the actual felt sense of it. So meditation, step one, right, is practicing with this is it. Practicing with coming in to the present moment. And then part B of that uh, definition I have is practicing being at ease with life and ourselves just the way they are. Right? So we kind of think of meditation as if I do it long enough, I'll attain something called peace. But the truth is, you're practicing peace. You're practicing being at ease, bringing ease to whatever's arising. It's not about feeling good. It's about feeling whatever is there to be felt. Right? We're not trying to manipulate or change. This is what we do in our lives, and it never really works. Right? Try to hold the pleasant. Try to push away the unpleasant. Right? And our life becomes a push and a pull, a push and a pull. Instead, we can just let go of that pushing and pulling and say, okay, now this. Now this. There's another two words that you can use in your life. You wake up and you're feeling sad and, and anxious. Okay, now this. Right? This is the truth of my life in this moment. And I can learn to relate to it rather than live from it. And that's like the key of this practice. How do I relate to these things, right? I become the movie screen and I can relate differently to the scenes of the movie uh, because I have this wider perspective, right? So practicing being at ease with life just the way it is. Really, you know, put that part into your mind. Just the way it is. You know, and so many people give up meditation because they sit down and they think it's going to be really nice and peaceful, and their mind's a complete disaster. It's like being locked in a closet with a maniac sometimes. <laughs> um, and they think, well, this doesn't work for me. And, you know, they try it once. This doesn't work for me. I can't stop my mind. Can you sit down at a piano and play Beethoven the first time that you try? No, of course not. Right? So how do you expect to be able to be centered and at ease with yourself the first time you sit? You know, it's not easy, uh, especially, you know, especially in the beginning, it's not easy, uh, but it just takes some practice and you get better and you get better at it, at being at ease, right? So, um, and then the other thing uh, about my mind is so busy, fine, that's just simply what's true, busy mind, right? We don't have to stop our mind. You know, a quiet mind or an empty mind is not a mind that does not think. If you're alive, your mind's going to think. Your heart beats. That's what it does. It's an organ. Your stomach digests. That's what it does. It's an organ. Guess what? Your mind's an organ too, and your mind was made to think. So if you sit down and meditate and you have a lot of thoughts, great. You're alive. That's pretty normal, right? Again, it's how do we relate to these thoughts differently rather than live from them? How do we not become these thoughts, you know, and how do we see what thought patterns are skillful and wholesome and you know continue to cultivate those and how do we see which ones are not which ones are causing suffering to ourselves or other people and how do we learn to let go of those you know so it, it's a it's a big life practice and it's it's so much more than just sitting right so those are my two definitions practicing being present 
and then practicing being at ease with life just the way it is, exactly the way it is. All right, so no matter what's there, as long as you're paying attention and opening to it, you're doing it. All right, it doesn't matter if you have a lot of thoughts. Great, thinking mind. Good to see you again. You can hang out here too, right? It's that simple. Worried mind. Oh, hey, worried mind. Nice to see you again. I'm sure you're going to be visiting me a lot these days. <laughs> Come on in, right? So let's, let's take this a little bit further. Um, so I break down, like, what are we actually trying to do when we meditate? I break it down into to three, three different things, all right? So bear with me here. I go on a lot of tangents too, so I'm going to try to stay focused. Um, so first, what are we doing? We're trying to cultivate mindfulness. And what is mindfulness? Well, uh, you know, I have five definitions for that. So uh, here we go, right? So on one level, it's an intentional paying attention. Right? So we're practicing being present. We're actually intentionally bringing our attention, bringing our awareness to the experience right now. Right? Inside, outside, you know, the five senses, the sixth sense being not talking to dead people, but <laughs> your thinking mind is the sixth sense. And just really seeing what, what's here. Like just, you know, wanting to, to look. Right? And it's an intentional paying attention without judgment, an unbiased paying attention. That's the second part of it. We're not trying to push away. We're not trying to hold on. We're just trying to be open. You know? And what I do in the guided meditation sometimes is I say, imagine yourself as a house, an empty house. Nobody's home, but all the doors and windows are open. Right? So anything can come in, anything can stay, anything can go. Right? That's the kind of attention that we're learning to cultivate as we do the actual sitting. Right? Just this open, spacious, welcoming attention. Um, the third part is that there's a sense of warmth. This isn't just a cold paying attention. Right? A sniper can pay attention uh, intentionally when he's about to blow somebody's head off. I mean, that's not what we're trying to do here. Right? We're trying to bring a sense of warmth. You know, and we're a society of, of self-hatred. We really judge ourselves a lot. We really talk down to ourselves a lot. So this is very radical for us to just sit there, to not try to fix things, to not make something better, to not make ourselves feel a certain way or push away a feeling we don't like, but just to say, ah, now this. Great. This is my life. Okay. Maybe unpleasant right now. Maybe pleasant right now. But those things come and go, right? Things come and go. You know, so a mood will come and go. Your fears will come and go. A busy mind will come and go. A quiet mind will come and go. Everything comes and goes. Right? And we try to find some equanimity at the center of that. Um, the next part is curiosity. And this plays a really important role in living meditation. Because right? it's not just about sitting on a cushion. You know, even in my yoga classes, at the end of my yoga class, I say, Listen, your practice is just starting as you roll your mat up. You know, your practice didn't end. It's just starting. And to me, an advanced yogi, an advanced meditator, I, I look at how they're living the rest of their life. Great, you can do a handstand. Great, you can sit in meditation for two hours. Woo, great. You could do a split or, or you know, some crazy stuff on Instagram. That's nice and that's fun. And I like to do, I don't do splits, but I like to do handstands and things. It's fun, I get it. But how are you living the rest of your life? That's an advanced person, you know? That, to me, is advanced, right? So, so living your practice, uh, curiosity becomes extremely important. You know, so let's say you struggle with anxiety right now, especially right now. So when anxiety comes up, usually it's just you become it. You're an anxious person all of a sudden. It arises and, oh, I'm anxious. And, oh, I don't like this. And, oh, I shouldn't feel this way. And nobody else online looks like they're anxious. They all look happy. And poor me, I'm the idiot that's anxious by myself. What's wrong with me? I need help. Da, 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 da. And we get so lost in it, right? Now, you could do something a little differently, right? The, the sensation of anxiety could arise. And you could say, huh, what is this? Right? You become curious. We think we know what anxiety is, but we've never looked at it. We've never welcomed it. I work one-on-one -on -one with people for meditation and mindfulness, and I tell them, I work, well, I work a lot with anxiety, uh, people with anxiety, so I tell them, I say, listen, have you ever welcomed it? Have you ever just willingly felt it, like just felt the unpleasant feeling of anxiety, and they, you know, 
look like they saw a ghost. Of course not. Why would I want to do that? You know, I want to get rid of this. But it's a part of you. It's something that's arising. It's what's true in that moment. It's your life in that moment. Why do you want to reject a part of your life just because it's unpleasant? Right? So we want to look at it and say, okay, how long does this last? What is if I set a timer for two hours and I just sat here and I let it feel uncomfortable? I felt that tightness. I felt that heaviness. I felt whatever it feels like. And yeah, you see the thoughts about it, but you try to let those go and come back to that felt sense. Ugh. Unpleasant tightness, you know, heaviness, and, and just kind of relaxing with that. Because if you can learn to relax with that which is unpleasant to you, I mean, that's how you get an equanimous mind. One of my favorite words, equanimous. Uh, you know, you, you can't have an equanimous mind if you just want things that feel good and comfortable. And that's not life, right? Zorba the Greek, I think, uh, said trouble. Life is trouble, right? <laughs> so this is what we got. This is the situation. We need to train our nervous system to be okay with discomfort, with uncomfortable situations, with uncomfortable feelings and states of mind, because these things are going to arise. And there's nothing wrong with you. It's just part of the human condition for these unpleasant things to visit from time to time, right? Aging, illness, death. These are real things that we can't run away from. As much as we want to pretend like it doesn't happen, it will happen. So how do we relate to that? You know, how do we train ourselves to be open to that? It's not easy. This is not an easy practice. It's simple. Sit there, pay attention, open up. But it's not easy. If you've ever tried it, that you'll, you'll, you'll see. Um, so curiosity is an important part. Being willing to look. And then the last part I think is very important about what cultivating mindfulness means is being willing to be with your life just the way it is. Because think of our suffering. Look at your suffering in your life. Two categories, right, that causes suffering in our lives. Something's wrong. Something's missing. Right? Life shouldn't be this way. I shouldn't feel this way. Things should not be happening like this. Right? Those are the two forms of suffering that really most suffering fits in. Right? In this situation, it shouldn't be happening. But it is. Right? But it is happening. And part of meditation, I think, is just being a spiritual grown-up. Right? Having a mature practice and just saying, okay, my life is like this now. How can I meet this moment to bring the least amount of suffering? Or how can I meet this moment to bring the most ease? Right? How can I be of most use in this moment? Right? This way, everything in our lives uh, becomes a source of our practice, a source of our growth uh, on the spiritual path, if you want to call it that, whatever path you want to call it. <clears throat> so that's cultivating mindfulness, an unbiased, intentional paying attention with a sense of warmth, um, with some curiosity, and with a willingness to be here. You know, we sit upright in meditation. And we relax our body and we say, okay, whatever arises, I'm going to sit here with it. I'm going to remain unmoved and I'm going to be open. I'm going to feel what needs to be felt, let go of thoughts that arise and just be still. Right? And when you practice that day in and day out and day in and day out, and then you start practicing it in your life, just at work something happens and you open to it and you, you know, pause with it. Then you start cultivating this mind that is open, that is free. And then that becomes your default mode. Right now, default mode is mindlessness, right? <laughs> Scattered, unconscious. Don't even know what's going on in the mind most of the time because you are becoming it without even paying attention, right? So our practice is about waking up. That's why they call it awakening, right? We're waking up to what's going on so that we can be skillful, so that we can act in a skillful and wholesome way and not be so limited to our thoughts and our fears and our uh, moods and all of these things that we experience in our lives, that we're free to, to choose how to act. So the second part of meditation, so that was under cultivating mindfulness. The second part is making friends with what we find, or you could call it unconditional friendliness, radical friendliness, doesn't matter the word. Uh, whatever word you like. But again, normally in life, things arise, and if we like it, we want more of it. And we try to hold on to it. We try to, you know, grasp it. And when unpleasant things arise, we just want nothing to do with it. 
you push it away. That's like that push-pull I was saying. So in meditation, we are making friends with whatever arises. And how do we do that? By allowing things to be the way they are. Very hard for us to do as human beings. But we can do it. I, I do it. You know, I'm not special. I don't have a super, you know, power or anything. That we can just pause and say, okay, it's like this. My mind is agitated and my, you know, feelings are, you know, anxious and my body's all tense and, you know, okay, this is my life. Let me make friends with it, right? What's the alternative? Again, we have to think of what's the alternative, right? Fighting it, complaining about it. How does that feel, right? It doesn't feel good. So to just say, okay, this is what's here. You know, cultivate this unconditional friendliness in this 20 minutes of meditation. Whatever arises belongs, right? Whatever arises is allowed to be here and I will welcome it, right? So, and, and we say it like that, unconditional friendliness over and over again. Now, the last part of meditation, of what we're doing, is learning to live beyond small-mindedness. And what I refer to, you know, in recent times uh, is me world. How can I step out of me world, right? And what is me world? You know, everything in our lives gets filtered through what I like and what I don't like, Right? Uh, and it's just like, for example, it's like, I want life to be this way. I want you to be that way. I don't think this should happen. I don't want this to happen. I don't like feeling this way. I want to feel this way. And we put these restrictions on this vast open reality to this tiny cocoon or this tiny bubble. And if life does not fit this tiny bubble, we suffer and we blame life. But it's not life. It's our own small mindedness. Right? And we don't have to live from a small mind. We can live from a, a vast mind, from a spacious mind, uh, from that still point of the turning world uh, that T.S. Eliot said that we mentioned in the beginning. So learning to let go of ourselves, right? And not an easy thing to do. We're very attached to what we think is right. We're very attached to what we like and what we don't like, our preferences. And it causes us a lot of suffering. So how? How do we let that go? Right? And it's as simple as just labeling. When you notice yourself selfing, right? <laughs> Not selfieing, uh, selfing, right? Something happens and the mind goes, ooh, I don't like that. I don't want any more of that. And you just say, ah, aversion, good to see you, right? Or, or dislike, you know, okay, thanks for your opinion, right? It's literally that simple. We have to wake up to the fact that we're not our thoughts. And we're not these feelings. They come and go. You know, how many of you out there you know, wake up in the morning and say, I can't wait to be anxious all day? Anybody? Right? It doesn't work that way. You wake up and anxiety's there. Right? We don't have a choice sometimes. Most of the time. So how can we identify with something that we have no control over? Same thing with the mind. When you sit in meditation, you'll find out very quickly that you have no control over what arises in your mind. That things are just coming and going and just chatter. There might be some habitual tendencies, right? That's normal for the mind, some habits of the mind. Um, but that's okay. I mean, we just learn to work with them, learn to let them go if they're causing us problems. So that's the, uh, the three parts, right? So we have, let me just do a quick review just in case uh, you're just tuning in now. Meditation, part A is practicing being present. Part B is practicing being at ease with life just the way it is. Please remember that one, just the way it is. And then we broke that down into three parts, cultivating mindfulness, right? Intentionally paying attention without judgment, with a sense of warmth, um, with a sense of curiosity, and with a willingness to be here. Part two is unconditional friendliness, letting whatever arises be there, whether it's a scattered mind or anxiety or a pain in your knee or people doing construction outside, whatever it is, we allow it to be there. We bring unconditional friendliness towards it, right? You got to spend the rest of your life with yourself. Make it a friendly place. Make it a friendly place. There's no reason not to. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're going to screw it up all the time. It's fine. That's just what happens. This is our lives. This is called being human. Now let's bring a little bit of, of kindness and friendliness to ourselves. And the last part is learning to let go of me world or small-mindedness, as I called it. So 
I want to take this a step further to really talk about finding peace during difficult times. So that's my spiel on meditation. So hopefully now you have a, a better understanding of what this practice is all about, right? It's not just let me go feel good and zone out. It's not let me just reduce my stress. You're going to reduce your stress no matter what if you practice. So you don't have to focus on that. It'll just happen. And you're not trying to make everything a lovey-dovey, you know, happy show. Uh, because that's not realistic either. <clears throat> Life is not always happy. Life is not always pleasant. And that's fine. That's totally fine. That's just the way the way things go. So, I want to introduce you to this thing called Elsa. And I didn't make this up. This is from a Buddhist author, Stephen Batchelor. So if you ever want to find out more about this, go a little more in depth about it, you look up Stephen Batchelor. And he's the one that really talks about this acronym. And the acronym stands for um, Embrace, Let Go, See, and Act. Right? And this is our practice. This is what we're trying to do. And so let's start with E, embrace. What are we embracing? Right? We're learning to embrace our life as it is. Right? Meditation and mindfulness, it helps you see what's true in life. Right? Sometimes they're very sobering truths that we'd rather not look at, but we learn to see what's true. Let me give you two examples. Right? So one thing that's true, right? impermanence. Everything that arises ceases. Right? It's not a belief system. Right? It's not something to believe in. It's just what's true. Right? When you inhale, you can't breathe in forever. You have to exhale. Right? Fall turns to winter. Winter to spring, right? Um, night and day, right? Just look at pictures from 10 years ago. There's impermanence, right? It's just, you know, you look different. <laughs> Things are different, right? So life is always flowing and always moving. It's like a great river that's always flowing. So we're never stuck, right? We're never stuck with one thing. So even this coronavirus situation, guess what? It's going to pass down the stream too. And at some point we're going to be like, remember the, you know, March 2020 when we had to sit at home and we were all nervous about losing our houses and this and that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a memory. Um, so when we understand that everything is impermanent, it allows us to really relax into whatever's happening, right? When there's pleasant and happiness there, it's like, ah, this is great. And we allow it to be there, but we don't grasp onto it. We don't cling to it. We just let it go when it's time to go. And when something unpleasant arises, a difficult situation, we open to it. Why? Because it's going to pass. It has to. And this is even more liberating when we understand it inside ourselves. Our thoughts, our moods, uh, you know, our emotions, the different states of mind you have, they come, they go. Really easy to get here, but you have to understand it here if you want to have some liberation in your life. You have to really experience it for yourself, to open up. Let's say you're really angry at somebody, to really open up to it and, and feel the anger and, and observe it, become curious about it, and see how long does it last, right? So I want to give you guys this um, great intro practice. We're, we're actually going to do a, a longer meditation uh, around 5.30, but um, this is a really short thing you can do anytime. And especially if you have a lot of difficult emotions these days, whether it's grief, uh, frustration, confusion, anxiety, depression, sadness, whatever it is, <clears throat> you can use this three-part meditation. So let's, let's try to do it now. Um, so you can do it along with me. Whatever you're feeling is fine. The first step, I go hand to the heart. I close my eyes. Make sure my body is relaxed so my jaw I, you know separate my teeth if they're touching make sure my forehead's relaxed drop the shoulders and I just come into the felt sense of whatever's arising in this moment pleasant unpleasant neutral doesn't matter right we're becoming that movie screen and just seeing what's playing right now and you can maybe breathe a little deeper so step one is hand to the heart relax and open up to how things are. So sounds are included, thoughts, feelings, sensations. 
And then in the case of something difficult, maybe you're feeling anxious right now, part two is just acknowledging. You know, every time I feel this way, I really have a hard time. Right? You're not saying, F this stupid anxiety, or I hate this. <laughs> you're saying, okay, you know what? I, I deal with this a lot, especially now with this situation. You know, this is hard for me. Right? Just a, an honest acknowledgement of, of how things are. And then the last part is really my favorite part. It's the cultivation of compassion. So right now there are, are millions, if not more, people feeling exactly what you're feeling in this moment. And we need to remember that. We need to shift from I am suffering, poor me, to there is suffering. Right? It's just a part of life. And this, there's a lot of people experiencing this. So the final part is just sending out a wish of loving kindness, of compassion. May anybody, including me in this moment, feeling this way, Find peace, find freedom, be at ease, be healthy, whatever it is that you're suffering with. You kind of send out the relief to yourself, of course, and everybody else in, in the world experiencing it. And then, you know, to finish, you can just take a, a deep breath in and out. And then you can just come back. Right? It's a great practice. I use it all the time whenever I'm feeling anything unpleasant rather than just running away from it, rather than doing the unskillful habit to you know escape from it. I come right into it. I hand, bring, uh, bring the hand to the heart. I breathe with it. I relax with it. I let it be there, right? That unconditional friendliness in action right there. I breathe with it. I be at ease with it. I bring ease with it. I'm not trying to get rid of it to be at ease. I'm trying to be at ease right there with it. Right? We're not trying to get through it. We're trying to be with it. That's an important thing to understand. Not getting through it, being with it, becoming intimate with it. So it's the pause. And then you say you know, that you're struggling with it or it's just an honest reflection about it. Every time I feel this way, I, I do this unskillful thing and I cause a lot of suffering in my life. It's really hard for me. And then the last part, you know, may all beings that are experiencing this, including me, find some peace, you know, find some ease with it. Um, so just a different way to relate to the difficult things that are arising in your life. And it can be used anywhere. And it doesn't even have to be your own suffering. Maybe you walk by a homeless person and you see their suffering, that you, you, you're willing to feel that pain that they may be in. And you, you breathe it in and you say, oh my God. You know, and you, and you open to it and you say, may they be free, right? It's, it's a very practical practice that does not have to be done sitting on the cushion, right? Anytime you're at work and you're really stressed out, man, let me feel where this stress is. Okay, my shoulders are tense. Let me relax, right? Let me breathe with it. Not, again, not to get rid of it. This is a crucial point, right? There's desire in there. There's aversion in there. We don't want to keep practicing that. We want to practice welcoming. Oh, man, this is what stress is like. This is... Part of human condition, right? This is difficult. May all of us find some ease right now. So it can be used with anything, and it's 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 really a helpful thing. And I learned that from uh, Pema Chodron, uh, amazing Buddhist nun. She has many books. When things fall apart, you know, comfortable with uncertainty, things like that. So if you have the time now and you want to read some of her, uh, I would highly recommend it. And you can always reach out to me. Um, to ask me questions or to get book suggestions. My life is, is to support you guys in your practice. That's what my life has become. And I want you to really understand uh, uh, that, that I mean that from the bottom of my heart. If you really want to take this seriously, I will support you in any way that I can. Um, so that was the E, embrace, right? And we had a little practice with that. The next part is L, right? Elsa. And that's let go. So what happens when we experience the, the difficult parts of our lives? Reactivity flares up within us, right? It's not just like, wow, that's unpleasant, and then that's the end of it, right? It's something happens, and then our mind and our emotions just react to it. And it's kind of like striking a match, you know? It's like you, you, you hit the match on something, and then it just flares up. Um, and this is what our reactivity is like. The problem is not the reactivity that's normal, but we indulge in it. We get involved with it. We get stuck in it and we take it personally. And really, uh, our practice is to just start to notice when this is happening. Again, not trying to get rid of it. We have to get rid of this 
<laughs> That's kind of a paradox, right? We have to get rid of the idea that we have to get rid of stuff, right? Remember, if you understand everything is just arising and ceasing, then you know that things will just burn out on their own. Things will just change on their own. So we can relax, right? And we can open up to it. So this reactivity arises, and we grab hold of it. Right? And we live from that. We live from the reactivity. Somebody says a hurtful thing to us, we react and we close down and we get angry and we let that anger have our mouth right? or, our, or our arms or whatever it is that we do in response. The anger becomes who we are, what we say, what we do. It doesn't have to be that way. Right? If we have enough mindfulness, if we've cultivated that long enough, then we can get to a point where we can see the hurtful thing. We can see the arising the flare-up of our reactivity, and then we could do something different, right? And this is where the S and the A come in. But be, let me rewind. Uh, staying on this L, we can also think of the L as labeling. It's a very helpful practice. So somebody says a hurtful word, and you notice that anger's arising, and you could just say, anger. You know, anger's like this. Or, you know, however you want to... To label it and the angry mind or um, whatever it might be right so we're labeling and that just gives us enough space to respond appropriately possibly right the potential for that doesn't always happen um, I surely haven't perfected it <laughs> but it, it's the possibility of that happening so we learn to to see uh, the arising of these flare-ups and we learn to label them and let them go Right? And if again, if we have that first understanding from the embrace part of impermanence, then we know, look, I'm really mad right now and my mind is really flared up. But if I go for a walk for an hour or two and I just allow things to kind of come and go, um, this is going to go away. Right? And then you know, after that walk, you're, you're at a centered place and you don't come back with the aggressive, you know, hurtful stuff. It just might be, hey, you know, that really hurt my feelings. Right? Is it? Just very simple. You know, there was something that hurt me, and, and I'm going to relate directly to that and just say, this is how it is. Not, you a-hole, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, so, uh, the normal reactions that, that cause more suffering. So the S in Elsa is, is C, right? So what are we seeing? Well, one, we're seeing the reactivity arise, but what this is specifically referring to is seeing the flare-up end. Right? And really seeing that process uh, firsthand, that these states of mind do in fact pass. And you can watch, you know, you can, next time you, you know, you're sitting at home and you have a thought, just watch it. And just watch that it goes away by itself. You know? And you don't have to try to get rid of it. You don't have to try to change it or fix yourself. You don't have to feel guilty about it. This is something that's really huge. We feel guilty about our mind patterns, like it's our fault. But it's not. Right? It's just conditioning. It's just how we've been conditioned by our experiences, by our unconscious you know, living, and that's fine. You know, we, we can work with that. So we're seeing the arising, but most importantly, we're seeing um, the, the ending. And um, you know, that's where our freedom lies. Then the A comes in. Once you see that this reactivity can arise and end, then you're free to act. That's the A. You know, we're, we're free to act appropriately. We can live an ethical and wholesome life when we're not limited to our reactive states, to our conditioned states. <clears throat> so in a nutshell, um, Elsa, you know, is that embrace, let go, see and act. Now, and, you know, really try to use this stuff. It doesn't do you any good if you think it's a cool idea and you never do it. Wow, that was a great talk. Uh, and then you go back to your life and, you know, you just totally forget about it, you know, which is, which is very common. It's hard to remember this stuff, especially when you're in the midst of some emotional reactivity or some reactive state. But it is possible to remember. Look, I, I have reminders all over me, inked into my body, and I forget all the time. So, you know, don't feel bad. Don't, don't let it be another reason to, you know, cultivate self-hatred. Just do your best. Try to remember. You know, put reminders everywhere. I listen to, you know, audiobooks. I, I like to read a lot. Um, 
you know, so that keeps me motivated and that reminds me why I'm doing this stuff to begin with. So stay motivated. Um, so embrace, embrace your life as it is. And, and really another practice of that is just the pause practice. Whenever you remember, just pause, just put everything down. You know, think of it like your whole life you've been carrying this heavy boulder. And then someone says, dude, just put the thing down. Just put it down. Right? It's still a heavy boulder. It still exists. It doesn't go away. But I don't need to carry it all the time. And what is that heavy boulder? Me world. Right? That sense of, you know, judgments and fears and anxieties and worries. They'll still be there, but you can just place them down. And you do that by just pausing and letting them be there. Right? Becoming the movie screen like we were talking about before. You know, um, just stop and then and, and pay attention and see. See things clearly. Right? So we're going to actually do that when we do the meditation. Um, the, the L is let go and label. We actually see this reactivity. We, we label it. We let it go. The S is seeing that this reactivity does in fact end. And then seeing that, we realize we have the freedom to act in whatever way we choose, right? We have that freedom to act appropriately and skillfully, uh, wholesomely, whatever word you like to use. So that is Elsa, and I think that that will be very helpful for you guys, um, especially um, especially during these times. So what I want to do now is do our meditation. So I want to do a guided meditation, and... Um, after that, we'll talk a little bit about a home practice, how to get that started, what that would look like. And I mean, I may be able to take some questions after. We'll see how that goes and what time it is. Um, but again, feel free to reach out to me anytime. It's author Mark Van Buren at gmail.com. Um, really, if you type in author Mark Van Buren on Google, you can get many ways to contact me or get in touch with me. So, um, you know, feel free to reach out anytime. But for now, we're going to actually get to the good stuff, <laughs> the meditation. So I want you to find a, as quiet of a place as you can. You know, I have my wife and three kids. Um, so I'm trying to have a nice quiet place up here. We'll see how that goes. It's been going pretty good so far. Um, but find, find a place that's, you know, fairly quiet, a place where no one will bother you. Shut your phone off. Unless you're, wa unless you're watching me on your phone, then leave it on. Uh, maybe turn the, uh, um, what's it called on? The do not disturb. And um, find a comfortable seat. So it can be in a chair. You could sit on a couch. You could sit on a floor. I have a Zafu, uh, which is the meditation cushion. <clears throat> and we're going to have our hands resting on the knees or in the lap. And I want you to sit up, right? Sit up tall, but not like tense, just upright. And for the remainder of this time, um, you can just keep your eyes closed. And I'm going to guide you through the uh, meditation. So let me get my timer going. Okay. So I'm going to start with three hits of the bell. And then I'll guide us through. So just start by listening to the bell. So we start by simply paying attention, by arriving 
bringing all of your attention wholeheartedly into this moment. And with unbiased attention, so imagine yourself as a mirror. And as you all know, a mirror just reflects what's in front of it. It doesn't push things away. It doesn't judge what's in front of it. It doesn't hold on to things it likes. A mirror simply reflects what's in front of it and gives a clear image, a clear reflection back. So just start to come into this moment with whatever's here. Remember, it's not about feeling a certain way. We don't need anything magical to happen. We're just coming into our actual life in this moment. And since our eyes are closed, really our life comes down to just a few things, body sensations, Sounds, thoughts, maybe some feelings. And that's about it. Those are the ingredients we're working with. That's what we're going to become at ease with. So let's start with the body. Pretty obvious that we have a body because we can feel it. So whatever position you're sitting in, Whatever state you find your body in, just start to feel it. Start to notice all the sensations in your body. You can you know, feel the legs crossed or the feet on the floor if you're sitting in a chair. Notice what that feels like. You can notice your bottom on the cushion or chair, the pressure of sitting. You can feel your hands on your knees or in your lap. What do your hands feel like as you sit here? Notice that you're breathing. What does it feel like to breathe in, to breathe out? Where do you feel that in your body? The belly, the ribs, the chest, the nose. Notice all the different sensations of breathing. Maybe there's an ache or a pain or a, a tightness in your body. Notice that too, right? We're not trying to push that away either. Don't make it a problem. Just notice, ah, unpleasant sensation. You can be here too. Thanks for visiting. And part of the sensations uh, in our body is uh, or are our emotions. So if you're having any emotional reactions right now, maybe some leftover anxiety from what's happening or maybe some worry, then just be willing and spacious enough to feel it. Ah, tightness in the chest, okay, you can be here. Heaviness in the belly. You're welcome here too. Maybe tightness in the throat. Right, just be open to it. Don't identify as it. Don't hold it. Don't push it. Don't suppress it. Just let it express itself. Just like that match that you light up, let it flare up and let it burn out. And then we shift away from our body to the sounds. Sounds are part of the present moment. They're not a problem if you don't go chasing after them. 
if you don't judge them. They're simply sounds coming and going. So just allow your ears to receive whatever sounds arise. And you don't have to focus on any particular sound, but just kind of becoming spacious and just letting the sounds kind of come to you. And if you notice yourself stuck on a particular sound, maybe just trying to see if anything else is there. And then we shift our attention from the sounds and we listen in the same way to our thinking mind. So to the thoughts coming and going. To all those little flare-ups in the mind. Without judging it doesn't matter the content. It could be worry, it could be anger, it could be peace. It doesn't matter. It could be a memory, an anticipation. It could just be chatting. Whatever it is, just see it, welcome it. If you want to label it, that's fine too. Ah, you know, worried about work. You can be here too. Anxious about money. Fine. Planning my day tomorrow. Good to see you again. But really try to notice that these thoughts arise on their own and end on their own. Try to really see that. They just pop up out of nowhere. And when they've done, or when they're done expressing themselves, they just go. And something else comes up. Right, be the movie screen of your mind and let your thoughts be the lights and colors, the movie. So then we come back to our breathing, come back to our body. You're not ignoring anything we went through, so you'll still hear sounds, you're still alive, right? you still have thoughts. Your body might start to get a little achy, you're gonna feel things in the body. That's all fine. But now we're gonna start to focus our attention a little bit more. So we're gonna bring our attention to the breath, right to the tips of the nostrils, and just feeling ourselves breathing in And breathing out. And why don't we take three really deep breaths in the nose, out the mouth, just to kind of settle in. So take a deep inhale through the nose. And exhale out the mouth. Good. Breathing in again, deeper. And letting go. And then the last one, breathing in, biggest breath of the day. And just let go completely. <sighs> and then allowing the breathing to settle back into a natural pace in and out of the nose. Before we focus specifically on the breath, let's just make sure the whole body's at ease. 
So I'll just say a part of your body, just make sure it's relaxed. So start with the forehead, the eyebrows, soften everything there. Eyelids gently shut. Face relaxed, jaw relaxed, separate your teeth if they're touching. Drop the shoulders away from your ears. Let the arms be heavy, the hands and fingers relaxed. Soften the torso, the chest, the ribs. Soften the belly, that's an important one. Don't try to suck in your belly or keep it tight. Completely loose. So when you breathe in, it's like you're filling a, a balloon with each breath. Relax the hips, the legs, and then finally the feet and toes. And just feel what that's like. Maybe for the first time ever, just being at ease, being still, nowhere to go, nothing to do, no one to impress, no mask you have to wear. Most importantly, not struggling with anything that's arising, not fighting with it, not holding it, not pushing it away. Just being spacious enough to hold the entire experience in loving awareness. So from this place, let's come back to the breath, come back to the tips of the nostrils. And as you breathe in, just know you're breathing in, feel it. As you're breathing out, just simply know I'm breathing out and feel it. Try to feel this next breath from start to finish as fully as possible. And then go to the next breath. And then the next breath. And you see how many breaths you can follow before your mind pulls you away. And it will surely pull you away. And it's not a problem. As soon as the mind arises and takes you away, a thought comes in, just label it, ah, thinking. And then come right back to the next breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Any thought, just ah, thinking. Let it go, back to the breath. So I'll give you about maybe a minute or two to just try that on your own. Stay with each breath, try not to miss a single one. If you do, realize you do, label your thoughts as thinking and just start again with the next breath, right? Nothing but this breath, this moment. Breathing in, breathing out. And let us feel one more breath as fully as possible. So this last breath, I want you to feel every part of it. 
So go ahead. And then let the breath go. And allow your attention to expand, to have this panoramic awareness. And we'll pretend we're that big empty house, open doors, open windows, nobody home. Things can arise, thoughts, sounds, feelings, sensations. Things can stick around and things can leave. Right? We're not home for it. We're not the homeowner anymore. We're just the light inside the house that shines on whatever comes in and out. So for the last minute or so, just rest in this open, choiceless awareness. Allowing life to freely come and go as it pleases. And in a moment, I'm going to hit the bell one last time. And I want you to really listen carefully to it and see if you can hear it completely until it stops. So it's going to last a long time. So just hear it until it ends. Everything in your life is like the sound of that bell. It arises, it sustains itself for a while, and then it ultimately ceases. So keep that in mind. So all together, why don't we take a nice deep breath in the nose, out the mouth, and just slowly start to move, maybe the fingers and toes are rocking side to side. And when you feel ready and there's no rush, you can just slowly open your eyes. It's good to see that people are still with us. <laughs> they didn't bail on the meditation part. Um, so hopefully you're all feeling a little more at ease. Um, and just, you know, keep in mind that nothing about our situation, nothing about our lives have actually changed. But we're at ease anyway, right? You have the same life that you started this video with. And I didn't do any voodoo magic on you or anything as you have the capability and the potential to be at your uh, to be at ease with your life just the way it is. Right. We didn't change anything. We didn't try to fix something. We just let go. We let go and we drop down into that spacious, loving awareness. And um, and it feels pretty nice sometimes to just show up for your life. 
and be completely open to whatever's arising. So uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, for the last bit of time I have with you guys um, about a home practice and, and what that looks like. And I do have a lot of tools um, for you guys to use. The first thing I want to show you is called Insight Timer. So it's this little bell here. It's a free app. And once you click into it, you have this timer. So you get different bell sounds that you can choose from. Um, and then you have your duration. So with, with meditation, you really want to be um, you really want to be consistent doing an hour once a week is nice but it's not consistent enough you know our habits of mind have been you know years in the making you know uh, the habitual way of the human mind has been thousands and thousands hundreds of thousands of years in the making so it's it's uh, it needs constant effort so a disciplined practice is important and if that, that means three minutes a day, that's what you can do realistically, then that's what you're going to do. And that's what you're going to commit to. You know, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it is. Um, you know, uh, you got to make that commitment. And you got to figure out a time of the day that works for you. If you, you know, uh, when we go back to work, if you're someone that travels on the bus or the train, maybe using that time. Right? Being skillful with it. If you get an hour lunch, then take 20 or 30 minutes of that lunch or even 10, 15. Find somewhere quiet. It might be your car or your office or where, you know, somewhere outside, a bench as it gets nicer. And, and do your practice. And it could just be nighttime. You know, stay up 10 minutes longer. Wake up 10 minutes earlier. Whatever you have to do, however you squeeze it in. It's so important and so crucial um, that you do it every day, right? Because that's where, that's where you, you start to build the fearlessness, you know, and the courage to show up no matter what. I'm going to show up every day and sit with whatever's here no matter what. Some days are happy, some days are sad, some days are fearful, some days you're sick, some days your body hurts, some days you don't want to sit and you sit anyway. This is how you, this is how you build inner strength, showing up no matter what. And then that comes into your daily life. I'm willing to show up for my life no matter what. Right? So it's so important. So you use this timer, um, you set your time, and you hit start, and the bell will go off. So basically, we're, you do like a shortened version of what I guided you through. Right, The bell will ring, you listen to the sound of the bell. When the bell stops, you just show up. You know, what does it feel like in this moment? What are the sounds I hear? What is my mind doing? You know... All of that stuff. You just kind of come into the present moment. Then you take a couple of deep breaths, maybe three like we did. You do a quick body scan, make sure that there's no unnecessary tension. Um, and then you uh, can just start focusing on the breathing, you know. And I didn't do it in this guided thing, but you can just count every exhale, right? So the bell rings, you take three breaths, you relax your body, and you just start counting every exhale. You're breathing in. You breathe out and you silently say one. Breathing in, breathe out, two. Breathing in, out, three. And you continue till you get to 10 and you start back at one. And you just keep doing that. Labeling thoughts along the way, uh, thinking back to one, back to this breath. And then you just do that until the bell rings. When the bell rings, you drop the practice. You listen to the bell. You take maybe a breath or two. And then you go back on... Uh, back on to go back to your day um, and someone said what's the name of the app it's insight timer it's on any smartphone um, so using that insight timer is helpful it does have guided meditations and so do I I have a three minute a five minute a ten minute and a twenty minute on my website author markvanburen.com and it's under guided meditations and talks um, you know, I go back and forth with the guided. On one level, if the only way you're going to show up and do it is guided meditations, by all means, fine. That's fine with me. But there's something about sitting with the rawness of yourself just as you are, without music, without somebody guiding you, um, that I think builds more strength. 
and it's uh, more useful for your practice to just sit with yourself and learn to be at ease with yourself without anything external because we'll start to become dependent on things outside of us. Let's say you like a Deepak Chopra meditation. Well, guess what? Deepak Chopra can't be with you 24-7. So if you're dependent on him to be at ease with your life, well, then you're going to have <laughs> some trouble because you can't get in touch with him and he's not always going to be there sitting in your car next to you when you're stuck in traffic saying, relax, relax. <laughs> so we have to be dependent on ourselves and our breathing is something that we always have access to and something that we can can always use. Um, so staying consistent, staying dedicated, using the Insight Timer app because it has a nice bell sound that won't scare you <laughs> like your other alarms might. And you can set the time. And what's great about the app is it really keeps track of how often you're sitting. You can see the accrued hours. You can connect with other people. You can connect with me on there. Um, and then you get like little awards like, hey, you sat seven days in a row, 10 days in a row or, you know, whatever. And it just keeps you motivated. It's a nice app. There's plenty of other ones that are really great, too. But I've been using this for probably like 12 years. I mean, I think I when this first came out, I started using it and I've never had any problems with it. So, um yeah, so, uh, you know, that's about all I have for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, you can quickly type them. I'll see if I can answer them. Uh, if not, or if you think of a question that might be uh, later on, I'd be more than happy to answer it. Just email me, Instagram message me, Facebook message me, however you want to do it. Uh, I'm always here to support you guys in your practice. Um, but if there isn't any questions, then I guess we can end. So I hope uh, that I've stirred something in you to really understand the practice, but to really be inspired to practice it. Uh, we got a question. The Pema Chodron to read, what book? Uh, I would read When Things Fall Apart, although you might want to read um, Comfortable with Uncertainty because of the times, <laughs> the situation that we're in. Um, feel, how do I feel about the app Oak? I'm not really sure. I never really heard of that one, so I'm not sure, but I'll definitely look into it. I'm sorry, I have to lean. <laughs> My microphone's in the way. Um, yeah, so you're very welcome. Everyone's saying thank you. Thank you all for tuning in and sticking with me. This is great that so many people stuck around, and especially for the meditation part, that's when usually people <laughs> check out. Um, which is strange, but it happens. So thank you guys so much. And, um, you know, I, I, once things get back to normal, I plan on teaching over at Iron Buddha. I have regular classes at the gym in Montvale, at places in Teaneck and Creskill. So I'm all over the place. I'm always willing to do more. So if you want me to come to your house and introduce it to your family, we can set that up. If you want me to come to your business, we can set that up. Again, I'm here to support your practice. Reach out to me anytime. Um, have a wonderful day and, you know, really be awake as you go through this challenging time. So thank you guys.